This video will take you on a tour of the Paint.net work area. Now after you've downloaded and installed your Paint.net program, go ahead and open it up and when you do, you're going to see these four windows pop up in your work area along with the image canvas right here in the center. Now along the top is the menu area. Whenever you click on a title, it's going to drop down more functions like for example under file. This is where you can create a new canvas area. That's this white area right here. And you can do the same thing by clicking here. And this open will allow you to open an existing image that you have on your computer somewhere. Likewise with this one here. And you also have these keyboard shortcuts that you can use to accomplish the same thing. Now in addition to this, you can also open up a recent project you've been working on. You can acquire an image from a scanner or a camera. And this will close out the workspace here, not the program. To close out the program, come on down here and click on Exit under File. And then of course you've got your Save and your Save As. Now whenever you're saving a project, it's better to go ahead and save it as a PDN, that's paint.net project file. That way, whenever you want to make edits to that particular project, in other words, with all the layers and everything intact, you'll be able to do so by simply opening up that .pdn file. Now, whenever you want to save it as a completed product, like a JPG or a PNG or a GIF file, then you would do that right here as well by clicking on Save As. Navigate to the location on your computer where you want to save the file to. And you've got the PNG or the PDN. Again, that's the paint.net project file or these other options here as well. Now, if it has some type of a transparency that you're trying to preserve in your image, then you really just want to save it as a PNG. You can get away with the GIF, but I would suggest sticking with the PNG just for quality sake. Now, a lot of these items are pretty standard, but whenever you click on a particular item, the functions that are available will depend upon what you're working on at the time or what tool you're using. Now, over here under the Windows tab, you can toggle on or off the different windows that are open. For example, the tools, that's this guy right here. You can toggle that on or off by selecting that or hitting the F5 key in this example. Likewise with the other three windows, Colors, that's this one here, or F8, Layers, that's this one here, or F7, or history, F6, or just toggle that off. And you would want to do that if you want to maybe have a larger work area. You can move these outside of this work area, and this comes in pretty handy if you've got multiple monitors that you're working with. You can have your canvas area on one monitor and all of your toolboxes on your other monitor. Totally up to you. And of course, the more you work with paint.net, the more of these shortcuts and tips and tricks you're going to figure out for yourself. And to help you further along that way, you've got this help section right here where you've got help topics. You can check out the paint.net website. More importantly are the forum and the tutorials. Now these plugins are pretty cool. These simply add additional workable features to your paint.net program. Now one of the major features in paint.net is the ability to use and manipulate layers. This is where the layers window comes in and you have even more options up here in the layers tab in the menu section. For example, you can add a new layer, you can delete a layer, you can duplicate a layer, merge a layer, same as down here. You also have the properties options down here and here. But up here, you can also import from a file, flip that layer horizontally or vertical and rotate it or zoom it. These can add an additional wow factor to your image whenever you're able to manipulate those layers like that. Let me go ahead and add a layer, kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about. Let's choose the paintbrush and let's make it a little bit wider. And let's go with red for the color. Yeah, no, I'm not an artist. Now, in adding a layer to that, the top layer is the dominant layer. In other words, it's gonna cover up everything here. So let's go ahead and for this entire layer, I wanna make it blue. So you make sure that you select the layer that you want to work with. And in this case, I'm working on layer three and I just click anywhere in here and it's gonna cover it up. And this being the dominant layer, it's going to affect the layers below it. Let me demonstrate something else too under properties. If we click on that, you've got this opacity tab where you can let the bottom layers kind of bleed through depending upon the number that you have here in the opacity box. And under layer properties also is where you can name the layer. And I suggest that you get in the habit of one, using a layer for every additional element that you add to your image, and two, that you name that layer as soon as possible, just to keep things organized. Especially if you end up having 15 or 20 different layers here, some of which are maybe 
say five of those layers are arrows, but they're different color arrows and they are pointing to different things. Well, be as descriptive as you want with the titles of those layers. Believe me, it's going to come in handy later on whenever you want to edit that arrow. You won't have to go down and start selecting each and every one of these layers just to figure out which one is pertaining to that particular arrow that you want to make an adjustment to. Let's go ahead and toggle this off so I can get my pretty smiley face back. Now if I bring my history window back into play here, this will show you kind of the timeline of sorts of the work that's taking place in our canvas area. So if you want to come back to a point prior to putting the eyes in, then you can do that. Or you just want the one eye, whatever. That's where the history comes in at. And you can make these larger or smaller. And before we close out this video, I want to point out down here in the status bar over here on the left, this gives you a description of what you're working with and what tool you're working on at the time. And a little bit over to the right gives you the dimensions of your working canvas area. And to the right of that in the corner, this tells you the location of your mouse. As you can see as I move the mouse over the canvas area how that number changes. Now there's a ton more that you can do with this than what's covered in this video and that's where some of these tutorials or the forums are going to come in handy for you. But hopefully this video has whetted your appetite to learn more about using this free and powerful image editor called paint.net. Thanks for watching and you have a great day.